Okay, let's talk about your blue sales tax tab. And this is going to apply whether you're using the Etsy seller spreadsheet or the Etsy import add-on. When you import in your order CSV in your monthly tab, um, not only are you going to generate those amounts over here on the blue rows of your monthly summary tab, but some info over here on your sales tax tab is also going to populate for you. And I want you to be clear on how to interpret this. First, sales tax in general is really complicated. This video's intention is not to teach you about what your sales tax needs may be in your state or what you're required to do with sales tax in your Etsy shop. I'm gonna assume that hopefully you've already taken the time to get up to speed on that. I do have resources available for you at paperandspark.com slash sales tax if you need more help with that. Um, but let's talk about specifically this tab and how it can help you report your sales tax information depending on your state. So the first thing you need to know is that whatever information it generates here in this box is gonna depend on the two letter state abbreviation you enter right here. So you can change this to be whatever state you're concerned about and it's going to show you your sales tax collected for that state and your total in-state sales here. So I'm located in the state of Texas. I'm gonna enter Texas for this example. So let's talk about what we're seeing here. First, this is just showing what Etsy is reporting they collected on your behalf for that state. And that is based on column W right here. We discussed this column W in a previous video when we talked about importing in your CSV and as you may recall, it's a little bit fickle. It is only going to show, or it should only show, sales tax collected for any states in which you have a nexus in. And if it's not one of those marketplace sales tax states where Etsy is collecting and remitting on your behalf. So this column's gonna be blank if you live in a marketplace state tax, or at least it should be, but sometimes Etsy inconsistently slash accidentally puts amounts in here. Uh, but if you live in a not marketplace sales tax state, like Texas, for example, uh, you should have your shop set up to collect sales tax for those sales if it applies to you. If you're subject to sales tax, uh, and those amounts should show up here in this blue row. Uh, the other thing that you usually need for your sales tax form is you need to report your total in-state sales. That is what the spreadsheet is going to populate for you on row 10 and row 14. The difference between these two numbers is the shipping the customer pays to you. So some states charge sales tax on the shipping the customer pays to you, and some states do not charge sales tax on that amount. So I'm just giving you both numbers, the total with shipping and the total without shipping. That way, no matter what kind of state you live in, once you figure out what kind of state you live in, you have whichever version of that number you need. So like in Texas, they do charge sales tax on shipping. So I know I would need to report this amount on my sales tax form for that month. I also have definitions right here of what each row is totaling for you, just in case you need a reminder or a refresher. Um, and due to the way these sales are reported, I wanna point out one other thing, and that is refunds. The, this total sales, including shipping right here, takes your refunds into account. They're subtracted out for you, so you're not gonna pay sales tax on any of your refunded orders. And the same thing goes for row 10, your in-state sales, including shipping. I've already subtracted out refunds here, but refunds aren't taken into account on these guys. Uh, just because there's no way of me to know there's no way for me to tell the spreadsheet whether it was shipping or not shipping that was refunded. So I couldn't build a formula to do that for you. So just know if you have to use one of the totals on line 13 and 14, these guys don't take refunds into account yet. So you may need to lower the amount by your refund if it was for not if it was for the sale and not for shipping itself. And then just note that for the total sales lines, I've just included this here in case you need to report gross sales to all sources on your sales tax forms with shipping or without shipping. You've got those totals there for quick reference. 
but really this in-state sales total is going to be the most helpful information you need in order to fill out your sales tax forms. And also, depending on where you are, your sales tax form may ask for a lot more detailed information than this. They might ask for your sales by zip code or by county or something like that. Unfortunately, I'm not able to break things down for you that detailed on the Etsy seller spreadsheet. The most that we can do is give you your in-state sales total. One other thing that I want to note for Etsy sellers who are using the Etsy card reader, the card reader provided by Etsy or I think Square now, I want to let you know that those sales are included on your CSV, but for whatever reason, the ship state shows up as blank for those sales. So what that means is that any card reader sales you have are not going to be automatically included in your in-state total here. So if you did a craft show or an event with that card reader, you wanna go into the CSV and find where they are. And if they're blank in the ship state in column M, you want to put in your two letter state abbreviation into that cell, like, like literally just type it in. You can copy and paste if you have a bunch of them, but you want to get that state abbreviation in there so that the sale and the applicable sales tax and everything travels to the sales tax tab so you can include it in your totals. Just a quick note if you're using that card reader. Now let's talk about this orange by state tab. This was a recent addition to the Etsy seller spreadsheet and the Etsy import add-on in light of the newer economic nexus sales tax rules. Again, if you're not familiar with uh, what's going on with sales tax these days or have any idea what economic nexus is, check out paperandspark.com slash sales tax to get more information on this. I'm gonna assume you already know what I'm talking about, but economic nexus in a nutshell is basically where you could potentially have nexus for sales tax in a state other than your own. So I'm not talking about where you're physically located. I'm talking about any other state. Uh, you could have an economic nexus there if you meet that state's specific economic sales threshold. So some states have a certain number of transactions that you may have to hit to that state before you reach economic nexus. Some states may say, if you make this much in money and money sales to my state, then you have economic nexus. Um, it's not going to apply to a lot of us because the thresholds are generally very high. So it's only going to apply to higher volume sellers. But the only way you're going to know if you're getting close or if you've surpassed a specific state's threshold is if you're tracking it. So this orange by state tab gives you the ability to track your number of orders by state each month and your gross sales by state each month. And this is gonna automatically populate when you do that import of your CSV into these blue tabs. Know that right now your gross sales on this tab is defined as your uh, order amount minus any discounts plus shipping. So this includes shipping received. It doesn't include sales tax collected. So it could potentially look slightly different than your total sales on the other two tabs because it includes shipping it ex and it excludes sales tax collected and it also doesn't take refunds into account. So this is just meant to really give you a general idea of how much in sales and how many sales you're making to each state so that you can see if you're getting close to any specific state's economic nexus threshold. Keeping in mind that, of course, because everything is super fun related to sales tax, each state has their own different definition of what the economic nexus threshold is. So that is a quick explanation of how these two sales tax tabs work.